congratulations for your documentary, Racist Trees. Thank you so much. Well, more of a congratulations making uh, making its uh, premiere at the Palm Springs International Film Festival, which is very fitting. How, how do you um, folks feel about that? Oh my gosh, we're, we're so excited. I think, you know, pretty much from the beginning of making this, I think we always imagined what it would feel like to present the film, a finished film with the community and see what kind of conversations come from that. And so, um, yeah. And then of course, having a, an entity like the Palm Springs International Film Festival, which has some really strong programming. It's the beginning of the year. You know, I think we're all just really excited about this. Yeah, it's um, it's just nice to be able to celebrate with the community and uh, we, we see it really as a homecoming. Most excellent. So I, I have to ask, what sparked um, you two to uh, make this documentary? Was it, is it because it, um, you know, what did it show up on the local news or you heard it national news or someone approached you? What, what, what made you want to do this documentary? Well, that's, yeah, you, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. It was in a, a local newspaper, the Desert Sun. Um, there was a quite extensive article, um, actually a series of articles by uh, reporter Corinne Kennedy. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the headline just really jumped out immediately. There was a big picture on the front page as well of the trees, this wall um, of 60 foot trees. It was a striking visual. And I think um, Mina and I, having made films together for, you know, almost a decade at that point, um, or maybe not quite, but anyway, <laughs> um, <clears throat> we uh, spent a lot of time here. We live in LA, we come to Palm Springs all the time, and it was, it was just really clear that this was a new part to the story of Palm Springs that neither one of us were familiar with, and we were interested to, to go deeper. So where... How, where did you actually start? I mean, um, obviously, this was probably something that was going on for a while. So how did you want to approach this? You Did you immediately just went to the neighbors or you went to the Desert Sun? I mean, what what where, where, where did you begin all of this? We reached out to Corinne Kennedy, who was the reporter of the of the article, and um, that was sort of our starting point. And she connected us to Trey. Daniel, who is um, one of the participants in the film. And I think he was very eager to tell us more about the trees, um, came and met with us. And, um, you know, I think based on that interview, we realized, oh, there's there's more to this. And then um, I think, you know, you, you, you start with one person and then they introduce you to more people and it sort of just kind of went from there. And to be honest, we thought that it would be a really long process in terms of um, we just assumed that it would take a very long time and we, we didn't know what was going to happen, but we just wanted to dig deeper because the, the, it felt like there was something really important there to, to kind of uncover. Were there any uh, subjects that needed a, a little bit more convincing or because it seems like everybody was eager to uh, pick a side and talk on this issue? Well, it was already a hot button issue, yeah. When when we arrived to to um, yeah, with our with our crew and everything. But I um, you know, I think like any film, it's a it's a process of building trust. And I think there was a degree to which you know, over the course of off and on for we were filming for off and on for four years and then editing for about a year. Um, and so you know, over that time people, um, you know, I think knew that we were really committed to telling a nuanced and layered story. And it wasn't just going to be like a, a surface thing. So we wanted to get, you know, not only different perspectives, but we wanted to get the layers of those perspectives, if that makes sense. Four years is a pretty long time for a fight like this, because it because just by watching your documentary, it seems like it was moving pretty quickly. Well, the the with within a, less than a year, the trees came down. Actually, um, that's a bit of a spoiler, but <laughs> um, <laughs> it was more uh, 
the other parts of the story, you know, getting to know the history of Palm Springs, getting, to, you know, digging up archives and trying to like piece together, you know, how this neighborhood, like, why does this neighborhood even exist? Why does there have to be a historically black neighborhood on the outskirts of town? Like if you go back far enough, you really start to understand like, oh, this is like any other town in the US that is fractured, you know, or has the legacy of systemic racism at the center of these different, you know, neighborhoods, you know, separation of neighborhoods, I should say. So were there any surprises uh, during uh, your uh, your journey through this uh, process? I mean, I'd say the biggest surprise was what started off as a story about trees. It just really uncovered, um, and Sarah alluded to this, like a much deeper past um, of very complex race relations. And, you know, and I, I think one thing about Palm Springs that we were talking about the other day is we don't even know if people know that it's tribal land. And so there's so many layers and nuances to um, this city that has a very glossy, um, fun kind of, you know, like a nice like getaway um, vibe to it. And I think that's also what attracted us is that we have a soft spot for it for going and relaxing, but we just had no idea there was all this um, history, like rich history and complex history um, there. And I think it's something that other people should know about. And it's a, a starting point for having some interesting conversations about race. Now, on, on the other hand, what was it was it challenging to find, you know, detractors who who are in support of these uh, trees? Um, well, we don't explore that um, on the other side of the golf course, I guess, as, as much as deeply, you know, we, we definitely reached out and pursued, uh, you know, with, with the intention of including as many perspectives as we possibly could find. Um, but yeah, I guess perhaps there's, there was less, there were less people who were interested in speaking to us who wanted the trees to stay just because of the, the fact that they were being labeled as, uh, symbolic of racism. So, um, so yeah, so that was a little, um, less present, I guess, in the, in the final product. Um, but I, can, is it okay if I add to something that Nina was just saying, just in terms of the surprise? Because when she was talking, it just made me think of the difference between working on this, like, pre-George Floyd and post-George Floyd. Um, you know, I think for us, it was, after the events of the summer of 2020 is, is when we were able to actually secure more financing for the project because people I think were finally ready to have some more nuanced stories told. And by people, I mean, you know, gatekeepers, I guess, um, were more tuned in to the fact that those stories are so important. And so we um, met our co-production partner, uh, Wayfair Studios, who really took this to the next level. It was their idea to make a turn this into a feature length. We were initially thinking a short or a short series. And, um, you know, and then it just became personally for me, it just became like a tool. I felt, you know, really lucky that it was like this tool to look closer at my own privilege. Um, and so, yeah, it really like that was something that we could have never obviously anticipated. And in, in when we started this. So so essentially, during this entire process, during this entire journey, it also shaped your your opinions of all of this because it seems like in every city, this is this is an issue in every city. It's a st systemic, uh, you know, ra racism that's been embedded for decades. Yeah, absolutely. In Palm Springs, or in in our film it's about trees but I think if you look in any other city it could be something else it could be a, a railroad or a highway which we sort of allude to in the film as well um and uh but I think the story of displaced people of color that just sort of exists all over the country and globally as well most excellent well let, let me wrap this up uh, with one one last question because obviously you are making your world premiere at the palm springs international film festival which is which is terrific and hopefully more people will get to view your film what is the one most important lesson that you hope that they walk away with after viewing your documentary um i 
I would hope that people, um, you know, just maybe pause and think about their perspective on on things, um, not just locally. You know, obviously this was this is a small town, so it's a it's a very present issue for a lot of its residents. Um, but I think you know, looking at the story as a microcosm for so many larger things, you know, not just around race, but around you know generational wealth and gentrification and there's just there's a lot of things that affect the lives of everybody in this country and well like I mean to say globally but specifically here with this audience I hope that people would walk away thinking maybe a little bit more about um you know ruminating on a different perspective than their own you know last words just to add to that it's maybe not so much a lesson but I think our hope in making this film was always that people can attempt to have more honest conversations about race. And I think that includes checking our own blind spots, but also just not being afraid to maybe say the wrong thing and maybe having uncomfortable conversations, because I think that's really the path forward um, to be able to make change and to, to kind of, to, to, to progress. Well said, well said. Well, ladies, congratulations on your uh, Racist Trees uh, documentary. I do love all the perspectives and all the other topics beyond Racist Trees that uh, you looked into of uh, Palm Springs. It's an, it's an eye opener, but uh, glad it's all settled now. Not not to uh, spoil, but <laughs> a lot of people will appreciate uh, you bringing in this to light. Thank you for this conversation, Nina. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks so much, Gig. Thank, Thank you. you.